Well, it's the Geek, Geek Fighter MMA here. Sorry if you hear noise in the background. My wife is cleaning up some stuff right now. Uh, first off, we're going to be talking about the UFC 229. And before I say anything, I just want to say the most important topic of that event was how uh, hot Derek Wu's balls were and why he took off his shorts. But of all jokes aside, uh, I will definitely um, talk about the brawl. But before that, uh, I want to talk about my opinions on the fight. As you can see, if you watch my live action, which nobody, pro well, nobody probably did because I am nobody right now. I'm just a geeky MMA nerd. But anyways. Before, <clears throat> um, I yeah, it's clear that I had obvious bias towards Khabib uh, winning. Um, Connor did actually pretty well. I was criticizing Connor on the first round a little bit, but uh, he actually did pretty well. He uh, in the first round, defensively, he didn't get. Be up to bad on the ground, but he got out position, you know, out muscle. You know, your fight could be, or hubby. The guy is probably the best MMA grappler ever, and possibly a GOAT. If he beats Tony, hubby to me is considered a GOAT. John Jones. He got tested, you know, he got cheated a few times. Habib, like, according to UFC, never lost a round, at least in the UFC. I don't know about his previous fights, but in the UFC, he never lost a round. You could argue that Conor won the third round. We'll get to that uh, later. But Habib never lost a round. The guy is, and he's doing it in the most difficult division ever. Ever since BJ Penn lost that belt, that division's been like so stacked, and it's finally it's finally even it out. And you can see who's the best. And right now, you have to say it's Habib. You know, he could still, Tony could still be him. I want to see that fight. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, or try to at least. Yeah, there's nothing much to it. Tony, I mean, Habib, in the first round, was, Connor landed some stuff. I don't know if it was like his timing that he didn't land the, like the power shot or reach. I don't know. Like he lands some stuff on Habib, and it didn't face Habib at all. It's not to say that Connor can't hurt Habib, but uh, maybe Habib. You know, maybe like when you're fighting somebody, you know, uh, sparring somebody, sometimes. I'm able to land like a weak shot that hurts a dude versus and uh, I spar the same guy and land a hard shot and like it doesn't hurt him. It's part of a situation like that with Connor. Not making excuses or maybe just Habi has a tremendous amount of durability which is most likely the I, I'm leaning towards that. Habi <clears throat> he has like uh he has like a striking style that's not pretty but it works like he doesn't have like super nice like you know like that you know he's more like and he'll load up and it looks ugly it looks awkward you like you blink flinch at times, but like it, it works. 
you know, like Luke Thomas from uh, shit, I forget, oh, I forgot his channel, but Luke Thomas, MMA journalist, he'd be saying like, you no, know, he's like the better version of Jake Shields as terms of his strike, well, as terms of his striking and grappling, and you know. It's not the most prettiest, but it's effective. Connor landed some few shots. Habib took it a little bit. Then he dived in. He does what he does. First shot looks ugly. His first takedown looks ugly, but it's not about taking you down. It's just to make contact, and then it forces you to kind of hold on to and he took shot him for the takedown Connor um, sprawl he's doing pretty good but it's just a matter of time for Habib took him down Connor did a very good job uh, holding Khabib not, not making sure Khabib could get up and like punishing um, with much blows and that's pretty much what uh, round one was Connor's holding on, trying to make sure could be could take him down. Round two starts. They're trading. Looks like they're feeling Joel could be uh Connor's uh, trying to weigh in count like counter B coming in with the takedown and then Habib like it's kind of like he faints a takedown, like he gets a little low, and then uh, he, instead of going for diving for the legs, he threw that lightning fast overhand, right, and clips Connor, drops Connor. Connor stumbles walking back. Habib shoots him for that flying knee that he loves to throw. You watch Habib's previous fight, he always throws a flying knee, and it looks funny, and you know, it lands, but sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, he threw that, didn't land. You know, he puts Connor, pushes Connor to the fence, or pressures Connor to the fence. You know, they're like slug a little bit, and then he sh dives in for the takedown, takes Connor down. Hit, yeah, round two, he takes Connor down. And this time, you know, Connor's shocked and more exhausted and he's able to pass Connor and just starts laying the it starts letting his hands go. That round two I was I thought it was gonna end that round two. But you know, if that I think if that was just a normal fight and wasn't a championship fight, Herdeen probably uh, could have stopped it and I would have been okay with it. But you know, it's a championship fight. People usually, uh, you know, they usually let you take more punishment during championship fight, especially if you're the uh, money guy, the one, you know. Yeah, this fight was crazy. And uh, I think this round, like, there's, oh, shoot, I, I forgot which round the Kimura was in. I, if that was round one or round two, but. Abu was trying for Kimura won the rounds and Connor you know I didn't catch it at first when I was watching it but we watching some of the stuff Connor threw like a illegal knee you know like Abu tells Abu tells uh, Herb Dean about it and Herb Dean does nothing Abu's like okay but yeah, Connor does that. He holds the fence a little bit. He was holding on to the beast shorts. You know. It's only cheating until you get a call for it, so whatever, man. You know, you could tell Dana and the uh, owners had a little talk with her Dean behind closed door. And yeah, Connor did a lot of cheating. And um Habib, yeah, pretty much end of the round. Habib total domination. I gave that a ten eight. That fight could have been stopped. Connor was just like, 
covering it up, and it was just Leonard B take punches on him, and he took a lot of punishment in that fight. Round three comes, you know, um, Connor starts taking the center of the octagon, and then they all. This one was Connor's best round. You can make the argument that Connor won this round. I gave it to Connor, but um, a lot of people are saying Khabib still won. And um, I wouldn't disagree because I think Connor is landing more volume, but when her B landed, it looked like Connor was hurt more. And um, yeah, it's like it was standing pretty much majority of the fight. And then her B shoots in. And this one, Connor was cheating, he was um, manipulating the gloves. Which was illegally, which was illegal, and uh, Irving did nothing about it. After this, uh, they had a little talk. Habib was like, when the round ended, they were talking shit. I didn't know what I was saying, but uh, I saw a little video, and I guess um, Connor said, "It's just business." I guess that's his way of, "I'm sorry," <laughs> and then. Uh, yeah, round two, round four comes. It'll, it'll be just, you know, he's doing pretty good. Uh, this fight, Habib looked like he had the better footwork. I don't know if that was partially due to round one, Connor's feeling out, then Connor got taken down. And you know, when Habib takes it down, he wraps it, his legs around yours, like kind of like triangles it in a way. And, um, yeah, that's like squeezing it together, you know, you're like, you're trying to push out while he's like squeezing in, you know, when you're squeezing, you know, when, if you're, when you're, if you ever get on those leg machines and the adductors, when you add anything in, you could do way more pounds on that than when you're doing the, uh, other one where you're Spreading your legs out, that one's harder. And yeah, you know, Habib just wrap Connor's leg. You know, Connor trying to like, you know, you're not trying to push out like that, but like, Habib has the positional advantage. And what Connor wants to do was like, you know, he wants to like push shrimp out. You know, slide his leg out. And yeah, um, Habib does that. You know, after that. That I think that had effect on Connor's footwork, and you know this fight looked like Habib had a better footwork. You know, round three I was like, oh damn, maybe Connor has started turning turn up. But man, round four comes. You could tell Habib was still the fresher guy. You know, he took a round off probably just to get a little breather, and. When he came back to that round, I was like, oh damn, I wasn't sure, because any other fighter, I would say, man, he's in the guy that said, it's going to affect his performance. But Hubby, you just don't know, he's, when, if a fighter does what Hubby does, people would be saying, oh, it's in his head, but Hubby, like, never listens to his coaches always argues, always talking shit, and like, he never sits down and listens, and takes, t t you know, and never needed to, to be honest, like, I think he just needs coaches for a fight camp, and a fight night, he just needs them to bring him water, clean him up, give him some drink, and... Honestly, I think that's all he needs coaches for on um, fight night. Like, as of right now, the guy never listens to his coaches. You know, yeah, you know, they train with him, give him a game plan, but like, Javier always be saying, like, this guy never follows the game plan. He doesn't do what I tell him, but hey, if he's not losing, I don't care. Um, yeah, Habib just came this one, took 
McGregor down and yeah he just pretty much beat McGregor to the positions a little bit of ground pounding in there but he got McGregor t he got the submission by uh, a rare naked choke dash neck crank it was mostly a crank um, Yeah, I know I gave a lot, I talk a lot of shit in my live reaction about McGregor, but hey man, uh, I give him respect, you know, your, I call him a calculus businessman over uh, a fire, and you know, the guy, yeah, you know, he could have chose an easier fight, and you know, much respect, he chose this one. And it's probably, yeah, you know, coming into the fight, it was gonna be going 50 50, and whichever way it went, it was gonna be a one sided beatdown. And, you know, going to the fight, you know, Habib had holes in his game, at least what it looks like, but yeah, there's holes, but I just think it's one of those cases of an awkward style of stand up that's ugly but effective like Jake Shields Jake Shields beat a Tyron Woodley in a kickboxing match and the guy be fighting like you know the only decent uh, thing from Jake Shields that didn't look ugly was his uh, lead kick I, as far as uh, stand up wise you know and Habib is similar, as, but you know he's more hands based, obviously. Yeah, uh, interesting. It was good fight. The brawl afterwards, I was not for it, you know. But I understand, and it was a ticking time bomb. You know, Habib is like a classic example of. The nice guy who just holds everything in, and then, you know, when the nice guy gets mad, you know, he's the ang when the nice guy guy's angry, he's the angriest person, and that's what Habib was, you know, he's, yeah, overall, I say Habib's a decent good person, morally overall, but. You know, he's the only human being, you, you know. I go and I find like a nice person ever, I'll just poke a stick at him, talk shit, don't stop. Dude's got a snap, and it was a ticking time bomb. You know, all that. You know, it, I, I don't, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's gonna happen, you know. You don't go around talking, you know, if I see a, a buddy going around harassing people, spitting, talking a lot of shit, you know, and he gets knocked out, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck were you doing, you know, yeah, he probably didn't deserve to get knocked out, but like, at the same time, you're not gonna fucking... You know, at the same time, you know, if you're poking a dog, if you're bothering a dog and you get bit, you know, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? It's, yeah, it was a ticking time bomb, it's about to happen, you know. And everybody's saying, oh, you know, it's because, uh, you know, yeah, you know, he's from a part of the world where, like, you talk that shit about somebody's family, religion, and they beat the shower you, maybe even kill you, you know, no one's gonna care, and you know, that's just the part of the world it beats from, and, yeah, um, it's not justifiable, but, considering the, uh, amount of attention 
going to the event, like, the rides could have been worse, which, thank God, wasn't. Habib, man, like, and then for, like, the Cole Connor thing, you know, Connor threw the first punt, like, the reason why this is also getting more, like, a lot of people are mad too is that, you know, uh, possibly concuss uh, Connor, like, Connor just had a, a, Connor just went through a war, you know, Connor just took a giant beating and then, you know, he got jumped, but, you know, that's why people are mad, and then, you know, like, you know, Connor threw the first punch, and then that's, when the whole cage thing started, but at the same time, you know, you gotta understand you just went through a war, your your mind is going all over the place, you don't know what's going on all you know is there's chaos out there and then you're not gonna be able to react and properly or logically at that point and yeah, Connor threw the first punch, but you know he wanted to throw that punch of Habib, went uh, gun over the cage, you know, like had Habib like this is the cage. Oh shit, I don't know if you can see uh, probably. This is the cage. This is Habib. Dallas over here. Had Habib just jumped off and landed right here. And yeah, you know, that would have been like, oh damn, you know, hyped it up a little, you know, people would have gotten out of there, but he jumped in there, and like, I saw the pictures, and man, he looked, and I saw one of the Shaolin guy doing this, Kurt, the same stance that he did in the picture, and he did like some fucking... Shaolin Kung Fu move, jumping off the cage, trying to land an attack on Dylan like that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I say it's wrong, but I'm not gonna lie. There are oh, every time I see that picture, like part of me just like, what the fuck, the means, and it's like, oh. and I partaken in some of the means, like I, I've partaken in some of the comments, trolling. You know, like, yeah, it's gonna happen. I don't think it's right, but hey, man, it was a take a ticking time bomb, man. It finally went off. You know, I don't think they're gonna do anything bad. Like, if you look at what Connor did and what could be a beat did at. The most Habib landed some punch that I don't even think, uh, I don't even know if it really hurt Dylan because the thing got separated fast. And compared to a car to throwing a dolly, getting glass in a person's eye, getting a dude cut up, that's worse. Had a dolly landed clean, somebody could die. and. Yeah, Connor. What Connor did was worse, but the thing would be what he did caused riots. If there wasn't any already, there was definitely more because of that. And like, luckily it wasn't that bad, but yeah. I don't think they're gonna do anything, you know, Dana and um, WIME or whatever the hell they call the owners are probably like, here in Nevada, talking to like the head boss of the athletic commissions and like sneaking some money. If fucking John Jones could get away with shit, <laughs> Habib is, they're not gonna do anything to him, give him a fine. You know, the overall, like, what happened in the cage, you know, like, 
it was a chain reaction and Pepe uh, started but in the cage it was Connor who threw that punch and I don't think they would have uh, but you know you can't blame Connor because he doesn't know if they're gonna go in there and like be, be up his guys too and you know Connor was like fuck it this dude just beat the crap out of me but hey if he's going after my friend you know I might go in there too, you know, and like, at least, you know, he's gonna try to stand up for his friend, even if he couldn't, like, even if he gave up to the guy, he's, if he's going after his friend, at least he tries to stand up for it, <laughs> credit to him on that. You know, let's, I'll be talking about retiring, so, before the fight, and, uh, they're probably gonna, not gonna like. They gotta give him a big fine. I'm pretty sure, just to force him to fight again. If he d is true about retiring, and it's gonna be more than likely, they, you know, the UFCs are in debt right now. They're in debt, so it's mostly likely gonna be Connor. It shouldn't. But more than likely it is, and uh, it's probably gonna fucking sell way more. But I don't know. Like they gotta look at long term. Like if Tony, I want to see him fight Tony before this whole. I don't know. I want to see Habib fight Tony and Lee before he retires. I have to see him fight Tony Lee. And then the uh, up and comer like Hernandez, Alexander Hernandez, like yeah, you know, do still need to be tested, but I know UFC loves to push Sean Sars fast, and if they push that dude fast, like I'm saying that dude is a fucking future, and if they push him fast, boom, you know, I want to see him fight B. Like if he they push him fast and he gets those wins, I want to see him fight B. Um, Connor, as for Connor, I think uh, the guy, he's probably going to fight Diaz no matter, regardless of Diaz's outcome with Poirier. I don't even know if Diaz is going to be fighting Poirier. Like, the, I keep hearing stuff like Diaz is not going to fight. Diaz might, you know, due to blah blah whatever and then there's rumors he's gonna fight like I don't fucking know Poirier like you know honestly I have Poirier but yeah um if there's a matchup Diaz could be it'll be like you know the top guys that Diaz has a decent chance due to style would be Poirier and Connor those are the guys that Diaz could beat due to style uh fuck. Connor though, like I'm not gonna try to find a lot of things to criticize him for. But like don't know this fight, like Connor's power, like it always bothered me that people say his power is like they compare it to him like he has the Yao Romero, Black Beast power. No, the dude doesn't. He has, the guy has power, but it's not that one hit a quitter like Yao Romero or Black Beast. The guy, like, I'm not trying to hate, but like, you know, I do, I was like, yes, you know, the guy, he has the power. Um, but like, as terms of elite finishes that he had, Chad Mendes, the guys that have been getting dropped a lot, you know, like, yes, granted, the only guys that was dropped him was Aldo, but like, after, you know, you know, you could tell the guy has been through some wars and his jaw is like iffy already. And we fought Connor, yeah, you know. Connor finished him, but it wasn't like the first punch land killed him. 
you know, these are all these elite finishes he has, they're all questionable guys are questionable jaws. You know, um and you know, you could tell like Chad doesn't have a good chance. Because after Connor, maybe you know he got knocked out in one punch by Frankie, and you get knocked out by one punch by Frankie. Like, not disrespecting Frankie, I love the guy. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch. You know, I love the fact. You know, I love watching somebody who uh, there's just somebody who has such a dis physical disadvantage fight, and he just beats the shit out of somebody with a physical. Advantage. I just love watching that. It's like, you know, like when you see somebody with clearly more physical, athletic belt, but the other guy is more skilled, and he's like, you know, it's just intriguing. And you're like, he has this guy. You know, he doesn't have the body of a world champion, but this match is intriguing because the other guy, you know, he's using martial arts and, and skill to beat the more physical it's I love Frankie he's one of my favorite guys to watch and I kind of see that and I mean Frankie does not saying Frankie doesn't have this he has some physical disadvantage but he also has some physical advantages like his cardio his pace and then you know obviously his overall well-rounded technique but Getting off topic, Frankie generally doesn't generally doesn't knock people out in one shot, and if he does, you probably can't take a punch. And yeah, granted, Chad Mendes took that Frankie fight too soon after getting finished by Connor too. And then you know, Connor's went against Eddie. Eddie, if you watch Eddie's fight before he got in the UFC. A lot of his fights, he's been dropped at least once, wobble at least once. Eddie does not have the greatest chin. You know, he has a good recovery time. You drop him, and then his legs not his leg will still be strong. You know, but you know he'll get like dropped. Eddie gets dropped all the time, a lot. And ever since he came to the UFC. On his performance, it looks pretty on and off, and none of them were that impressive besides this Gagey fight, which was due to style. And yeah, it was he showed up, but at a part of it too, he was also getting beat up. It was back and yeah, it was like, and had you know he didn't land that knee if he. Uh, I think that fight could have gone either way if you never threw that knee like yeah Gagey that's like yeah, he's only uh, true like excellent performance and that's probably more of a style thing than him showing up and he's been on and off you know he caught RDA you know and then the um Connor thing, like, I don't know, yeah, that finish is good, he finished Eddie, Eddie is a champ, but, once again, he gets dropped a lot, Connor took him multiple shots to put him away, not trying to criticize Connor or anything, but I'm just, he doesn't have that one punch power that the media makes him ha seem to have, like, he's a yellow barrel or something, he, Yes, you know, I like Connor for the fact that, you know, he maximizes what he has. You know, he's not the strongest person. He's probably, like, as far as, like, a, a, like a athletic metric, he's not as fast as some of these guys. But you know what? The guy has good technique, and that improves his B, you know, and he, oh man, like, you know, good for him, you know, he maximized what he has, 
and but you know the only guy out of all the elite guys that he finished or KO the one that doesn't have like a questionable class draw I would say is Otto and you know Otto's already been through so much wars too but like that's his best finish as far as elite competition and a draw like I don't think Connor is gonna be knocking out well Connor will never knock out a B. He landed on knees too and it did nothing to a B and those are like I think there's one way Habib's like they're in the cage and I think he landed on knee like Habib's in back against the cage at one point and Connor landed a knee um that did nothing. And you know, Connor lands on shots too, and Habib, it does nothing. It did nothing, you know. Going forward, I don't think Connor's gonna be finishing uh, the top five guys. Sorry, guys, but I don't think Connor has the power to finish the top five guys unless it's uh, Gagey. <sighs> I mean, he might be able to knock Tony Ferguson out too, because Tony, like. I'll talk more about him in another video, but yeah, I was planning to talk about more, but yeah, um, this video has been long enough. Habib, like, he can look way faster in this fight, and he looked more fast than Connor, and you know, like, you could tell, like, before the fight, like, I already knew, you know, Connor's not a strong guy. Habib, uh, overall athletic metric is part of the stronger person but um I am not the strong the more athletic person and the uh, overall athletic metric way a B probably sprints might sprint faster than Connor at least for his size his B is probably more fat impressive when it comes to sprinting it's obviously stronger and uh, has more endurance you know, but you know, in his past fights, you know, he's been slow, sloppy, kind of stiff, and I think, you know, he, his, the speed came through with the improvement of technique. You know, his technique got better, which made his speed better, fast, which made him faster, and the, he probably took, you know, Habib's fast, past fights, you know, he was, he'll cut a lot of weight, and I think that train his uh, performance he'd be like what 180 try and cut down to 155 he did those big cuts and I think it hindered his performance you know and this one I think as a combination of, yes his technique improved his timing improved on the feet but it was also due to the fact that you know he took a different approach where it's like I'm already stronger than this guy, no matter what, how I train, you know, like, even if I slack off, I know I'm stronger, I don't need the size advantage, I might be wrong about that, but like, a B probably, uh, you know, he took, you know, the less size, less cut, and more uh, speed, and fluidity, and yeah, it showed. Uh, this video's been long enough. I was planning to get to a Derek Lewis sweaty balls part, but I'd do that in another video. This is the Geeky Fighter MMA.